Yeah, anyway, um, the the USF people, and the USF people were, were uh, put their name, changed their name to like LSF, you know, basically, and they were like, USF, USF, and they're supposed to be a space age, uh, space pilots, and they're supposed to be space pilots and this and that, but realistically, they were just a mercenary group that went around Germany and France killing people. Like I said, the SR-71, uh, the, the, the LSF, LSF-71, it, it's, the, its proper designation is LSF, Lucifer Star, Star Flight 71. That's, that's what it is. It's made out of things that, that, that will not melt. The inside of the cabin gets to be about 500 degrees at least, and the, and the, and the special air-conditioned suit also went with it. And like I said, the tires were cracked and deflated on every single aircraft. Uh, there were two hangers of them, one hanger in, in France and one hanger in, in Germany because we ran out of room in one of the, one of the hangers. So instead of extending on, we just we just built another airport. I had another air, airport, so I was like, well, we'll just start flatting them over here. So there's eight in one and eight in a, and, and, and eight aircraft in another. And later on, later on, uh, Nixon and somebody else would be like, well, you get your eight and I'll get our, and, and we'll get our eight. And that's Boeing and, and Lockheed. You know, and like I said, they, um, they're just fucking around bullshitting. Um, and like I said, the, it, it was the USF people that went around killing a bunch of people uh, from 1930 to 1940 to 1950. Somewhere around there, 1960. Eventually it came out that, that those aircraft were actually LSF. Like I said, someone finally recognized or found a label on it where it says LSF on the aircraft, written in titanium. And like I said, they scratched it out, and it might have caused one of them to crash because they're like because they're trying to get rid of the LSF label because that designated them. Like I said, the LSF air, uh, the LSF seventy one aircraft were written about in religious text or or written about in very 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 old. Like everyone knew who L, what LSF was, a legendary high flying supersonic aircraft that was designed two hundred fifty to five hundred years ago. Possibly 1,500 years ago. Most aircraft people had only dreamed of seeing it for the first time. Like I say, le later on, people from aircraft people from around the world would, would, would pay large amounts of money just to even touch the aircraft because that was an aircraft that was possibly 1,500 years old. Like, just to be in its presence was like, Oh, I mean, thank you. I love you too. Um, anyway, the, the LSF aircraft were, they were not just supersonic. They were high flying, like 500 degrees. Like they, there was, you know, the only limit was the fuel, was the heat and the amount of fuel. If, if the pilot could take higher temperatures, it could go faster. Anyway. The, the fuel tanks had to be air conditioned, of course. Everything has to be air conditioned in the, in the aircraft. The fuel, but it doesn't really matter. It's just like a preheater. It just keeps it from the, from, from the combustion, cha uh, combustion level. Anyway, everything on the, on the aircraft is super, super specialized. And like I say, it's legendary. It's basically a spaceship. People, uh, the, the Indians and, and other people would say, it's a spaceship. It's basically a spaceship. That's why it's called LSF. You know, Lucifer Star Flight or whatever. Anyway, um, legendary. Hadn't been flown in 250 to 500 years. Nobody, almost nobody, has has actually flown um, the LSF aircraft except for killers and and basically the murderers that that, that pretty much killed everyone else. If they say they, they 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 they've been in the LSF, they're either lying or they're basically the people that shot and killed 1,500 to. To, to, a thousand, to a few thousand people. The USF boys, US, USAF people would basically be known as pretty much the killers that killed everybody across the planet and pretty much worked for Nixon directly. And were responsible for torturing and killing Chinese, Indians, Germans, pretty much they killed whoever. You know, you know they're 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 the they're basically um, war criminals and murderers and really bad people and would just go around shooting people and laughing at people and raping whoever they wanted. They could do whatever they wanted, pretty much, or 
until every last one of them was hunted down. The only reason why why they um, why they lived so long is nobody knew who they were. Nobody really knew who what they had done because because everyone had died around around where um, uh, they, they would shoot and kill every single last person that ever saw them do anything. You know, the, uh, they, they were the worst of the worst, they would say. And, um, and I regard, you know, it's a small group of, 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 of people that basically killed thousands, maybe even millions of people. It's hard to say how many people that they killed because they left no witnesses. They would literally keep shooting women, children, little girls, kids, the dog. It didn't matter. They killed everyone in their path until there was no one left. Leave no witnesses. No one knows about what you've done. And that's exactly what they did and how they worked. So no one really knew for many, many years who they actually were because they were like... And they would always wear masks and helmets whenever they attacked. So they would always wear body suits and body armor so no one could ever see their face. So, so no one really knew who the, who the USF, USAF was. Um, they didn't even know that they were USAF until I mentioned it, you know, of course. It's like, well, those are the killers that found the SR-71 and killed all the Germans and all the French around, around the hangars and all the aircraft engineers. Anyone who had ever seen, who, who, who saw the, the LSF with cracked tires, because like I said, it was the cracked tires. They knew how long that rubber would last. They knew that that rubber would last 500, 250 to 500 years. So they knew that that aircraft was LSF that flew 250 to 500 years ago, to 1,500 years ago, and was regarded as the very, very first supersonic space flight almost aircraft and legendary. My aircraft. From the Mirage's Dam, basically. The Mirage's Dam project is where we really started to learn how to do um, uh, uh, space flight. Basically, somewhere around the, the beginning of year zero of photographic history, or somewhere around there, like, like photographic history and the Mirage's Dam is about where things start getting documented, which is about, you know, two, a couple thousand years ago. You know, it's very much very old now, and basically just old White Star Line buildings, pretty much, White Dam. You know, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was ancient. You know, so, and so was the LSF aircraft. My aircraft, I was like, Lucifer Star, flight. I loved it. It's so cool. It's so cool. Anyway, like I said, after that, I'd be tortured and tied to a chair in 1960. And Rodney would tell me for years, you're not better than us. You know, we're the new stuff. We're the younger generation. And that was a long time ago. That was like 1960, 1950 when... They had me tied to a chair. They tied the creator LSF or, or LS to a chair. Me. Everyone kind of knew what happened to me. You know, everyone knew that I disappeared somewhere, that something had happened to me. They just didn't exactly know what. Like I said, they didn't know where I had gone or who I was or anything. They were looking for me. Everyone was looking for me. Alice, where are you? Where are you? Here we are. So, anyway, I don't really care. I mean, I'm like, well, I know, LSF. I, I designed those aircraft and a bunch of others, and that was when we developed titanium for the first time. And like I said, it was, it was the mightiest yeah, touch. You know, like, shut up, piece of shit. You know, um, because like, like I said, we were literally creating gold. No one knew how we did it. We were just pouring out gold. They're like, "What do you have in there? A gold mine?" Because like, like, like there was no gold in that area. Everyone knew that there was no gold in that area, but yet we were we were making gold and uranium from extreme heat. But no one knew how we did it, other than there was this light source that was like that would beam up to space. Like I said, like it would light up the whole valley. You didn't need any lights in that valley. Just the glow from the uh, from the from the smelting pot was enough. 